indeed. And uh, when you when you were arrested, uh, news spread quite quickly, and folks like Alex Jones and David Icke uh, were keen to cover the case. I've got a few clips here which we'll play now. This is a short clip of uh, Alex Jones discussing your arrest. Here's one out of the Press Journal. Sex abuse family legal advisor arrested. And you read this article, the legal advisor, which is a part of the court in their system, was going to go downtown with the family and hand out flyers. And they were arrested by the police, and they said, you're not allowed to hand out flyers in Scotland because the report is about police sexually abusing children. I mean, this is major news, and they report it like it's normal. Oh, you don't have any right to any freedom in Scotland. And, and they're trying the same kind of stuff here in the United States. I mean, I have there you go, that, that was the man himself, Mr Alex Jones, discussing the case. And uh, uh, then later on, he had uh, David Icke on the show. And this is what David Icke had to say. And this, this kind of sums the case up well uh, in a nutshell. This is David Icke speaking on the Alex Jones show last week. Um, I, I'm uh, exposing a story at the moment, which is uh, um, the microcosm of the macrocosm, which is of a, uh, a, a young uh, Down syndrome girl in Scotland. She's not in Scotland now, she's in England. She's had to flee because of the... the uh, not uh, pulling any punches there and just <laughs> saying quite some quite controversial things but uh, Robert it's, how, how do you feel about uh, being discussed on such high level shows well it's, it's very flattering actually it's very kind of David Icke and courageous of the people all the people in the media who are helping in this case because it takes nerve we're dealing with some very very nasty people who've got a lot of power we're under no illusions about that whatsoever and uh, I'm very pleased and, and flattered by all the people who've spoken out but of course the main thing it's not really about me it's about Anne and Holly and all the other poor children who have 
been abused. Of course, and uh, the ho Holy Story has not just been reported in America, but the Palestinian Telegraph has extensively covered the entire story over three or maybe more major articles. How did that come around? Uh, well, I think it was just picked up uh, as one of the, the many uh, sort of outlets all over the world that have been picking up, and we've had support from Holland and uh, uh, we believe South Africa, uh, Spain. It, it's, uh, it seems to be spreading all over the place, and we believe a lot of other major countries are going to come in uh, before too long. I think with the, the Palestinians, I think that uh, obviously they have serious problems themselves, which uh, obviously isn't a subject for discussion uh, tonight, but I think they're rather identified with a regime that... Uh, sort of uses brute force to suppress people. And I, I think it is very disturbing that um, the United Kingdom spends a great deal of time telling other countries how they should run their affairs when a component part of our, our country, Great Britain, uh, has one of the uh, a terrible record for, uh, for abuse, especially towards the most vulnerable people in society. So I do not think, as a United Kingdom, we are in any position to lecture anybody in the world about how they should run their countries and about human rights. I agree with that entirely. Um, does, it, does it give you encouragement to see Holly's case being reported in places like America and the Middle East, but then does it anger you that the UK press, the UK mainstream media, lacks the integrity to report this story fully and it comes down to small independent stations like this one and uh, to, to discuss it? Yes, it does, because uh, when uh, we've got to come to another issue a little bit later on, I think, if we have the time, with the BBC, well, the BBC originally were going to do this story. They assured me this was a story that would go around the world. It was the worst story they'd ever heard. Well, it is going around the world, but no thanks to the major people in the media uh, industry. I think one thing that uh, I really should say, and I, I do want to say this at this point, is that Obviously, we've been criticising things that have been happening in Scotland all the time uh, and uh, very vociferously. But I I'm a great admirer of Scotland. I love Scotland. I think it's a wonderful country. and has some of the most decent and kind people you will find anywhere in the world. And if the Scottish people had any idea or were given the opportunity to know what is going on in their name, their government, I think they would rise up. And they'd rise up right now. And this is what the authorities are terrified of. I watched Braveheart last night, like I'm sure some of the listeners uh, might have done. And, uh, we need, a, we need a new William Wallace, so if there's anyone listening out there that feels inspired by William Wallace, maybe we can uh, uh, get rid of these tyrants that are running things. Well, there are two very brave people I can tell you right from the start, and that's Holly Gregg and her mum, Anne. If You're there right. are two braver women, you will never come across anywhere. We got a, a message there from John on MSN. He says, um, speaking of the mainstream media, he emailed uh, jo uh, Donald McIntyre, and uh, Donald McIntyre said he would look at it, and Donald asked him to send everything that he had, which uh, John then did, and that was the last that he heard from him. Uh, one thing I'll say about Donald McIntyre, as great as a, a journalist he is, and he's a very uh, professional sort of guy, he's happy to go and... Uh, make documentaries exposing gangsters, exposing drug dealers, exposing uh, some sort of petty crime that's going on. Uh, but when it comes to high-level government corruption, uh, Donald McIntyre is nowhere to be seen. And uh, it's a bit like that the whole way through the mainstream media, I'm afraid. So that's why folks like uh, myself and We Are Change, and uh, then you've got in America, obviously, the Alex Jones Show and stuff like that, it comes down to independent media to tell the truth, um, because the mainstream media has itself gagged by the likes of Levy and the Cray. And... Uh, Oh, we could talk about this all night, but we'll get back into uh, uh, the Anne Gregg interview that I did earlier on in the week. I asked Anne when she first became aware that Holly was being abused. All right, just tell us uh, when you first became aware that something was wrong with, with Holly and that someone was doing something to her. Okay. Uh, I fled my home uh, in May of 2000. Uh, my husband had beat me up. I was actually, after my brother died... Um, he died in 1997, this is now 2000, and my brother's estate still wasn't, uh, you know, wound up. And the lawyer, who was a, a friend of my husband's, uh, you know, kept giving all sorts of excuses to why it wasn't, you know, sort of finished and, and everything like that. So I ended up going to the Law Society of Scotland about it, and, you know, because I was missing monies uh, belonging to my family. And... Uh, I got beaten up this night because I was photocopying all the, the relevant documents to put down to the Law Society. Uh, so I had to, you know, flee my home and I ended up in a hostel in Aberdeen. And we were in the hostel about two weeks and uh, I was trying to reassure Holly that, you know, that I was previously going to uh, leave my husband in 1994 because I found out that he was sleeping with prostitutes over in Singapore. And, uh, but 
stupidity and, you know, all sorts of reasons, uh, you know, we decided that we would try again with our marriage. And, uh, but at this time, you know, I was trying to tell Holly that Mummy was definitely going to go ahead and divorce her father and that we would get a little house and her and me would be happy and there'd be no more fighting. And she says, we've got to get the dogs, Mum. That, you know, she had two Bichons. And uh, I says, we will, Holly, we'll get your dogs, don't worry. No, he'll kill them, you know. And I says, no, Holly, I says, Mummy doesn't like, it's nothing to do with the dogs, you know. And uh, she says, no, he'll kill me too. And I says, Holly, stop being so silly, you know. It's, this is a fight between Mummy and Daddy. It's nothing to do with you, it's nothing to do with the dogs.